Okay, quick video talking about a stock that's uh, breaking out this morning. So, ERGO, Ergomed, UK small cap growth stock. I won't go on about the fundamentals. Basically, I'll just say it's a top 40 contender in, in my uh, GTRS watch list, what compares all stocks against each other. It fits the growth characteristics I like to see. It posts an inline, but an inline with very good numbers. In fact, the guidance is in line, the last guidance, and it's in line with very good numbers. So, worth just noting that as well. So, in March, the market crashed. Uh, this actually held some pretty good relative strength. I know it's 40 odd percent pullback. In the crash phase, it just it did this little move here and then back up into the 52 week highs area, you know. So, William O'Neill rule, buy within 5% of the base. Now, I trade UK AIM, small cap growth stocks. A lot of them can have extremely wide spreads. So, I had to manipulate the, the O'Neill rules to suit what I do in the AIM markets. So, first things first, 490 would be the 5% rule. It's not quite available at that price if, if you wanted a guaranteed stop on a spread bet account, but it is with the shares account. Um, but with these very illiquid ones, I, I stretch the O'Neill rule. I like to get in below sort of 7.58% on, on this kind of stock, what has um, wider sort of um, spreads on it. But 10% is okay on a, on a small cap in my world. I'm shooting for a trend, a primary trend. You know, I want to see this thing go. I want to see this thing do the same as it did uh, for my friend. <laughs> A trading basis who rode this leg. Um, I want to see it do a similar thing, you know, 150% move from uh, in, in under under a year. So that's the kind of thing I want to shoot for in small caps. If I'm going to commit, I want them to tick all the boxes I like them to tick at this point in time on the fundamentals and on the technicals where the technicals and the fundamentals meet you know that that sweet spot but i'll just say saying that it's a wider base than i would usually like but it's got a, a big correction in in the mix so i've adjusted my risk a bit more sort of aggressively than this this sort of move down here of just my risk a bit tighter um also what i will say is breakouts can be an event but are usually a process now in small caps more often in a nice looking base they they are an event but they can still be a process so i have to position size for the process i if this dips back into the base i don't i don't call it a fail breakout you know it's not failed until it breaks my stop level but in more liquid large caps more often than not it's a process you'll, you'll see a breakout and then sometimes it'll just bumble around around the breakout level sometimes it'll move up and then do a first pullback small caps you have sort of, you know, in my view, you have an edge that these things are more often a process in the good growth stocks from a nice defined base. So I have to take my position for the case that it might be an event. Otherwise, I get left behind. So position sizing, you know, protect yourself with layers of risk. First layer most important this stock goes bankrupt in 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 the sort of future how much is that going to cost me on the account you know you don't want to go into a hole what's hard to trade out of 
Second level, how much is this stock going to cost me on a 50% haircut on, on a profit warning? Are you happy with that gap risk? Yes, I am. You know, I'll position size for that. Third, just position size for how I make money, multiples of risk. So, you know, you have to be, you have to tick these boxes and tick your other fundamental boxes as well. Any risk you see for this stock, you just, you know, whatever makes you money over time, you make sure you know over all, all the, the, the investments you've made in the past, what really does affect you and can that be solved with position sizing or is it just something sinister in the stock say, say you know, this has got uh, Fred's value ratio is, is too high, you know, over time this loses me money, things like that, you know. And um, every, every investment trade you take, if you know the things what are apparent in all of those investments, what just, you know, if it has that characteristic, it might just be high debt, it might be something else. Just have a checklist for your own style. I'm just showing you something I, I do uh, in my style. <laughs> um, Next thing people will say is, oh, it's got a huge spread on it, this one. Now, if you're buying the shares, you're trading between that quoted spread. If you're buying a spread bet, you're trading outside that quoted spread. A spread bet offers a guaranteed stop. It does get you in with it between, you know, within that sort of 10% um, maximum outside the base level. But... You can also use a guaranteed stop on a spread bet. So, you know, sometimes I do portion spread bet, portion shares, all shares. It depends, you know. And um, so you can think of them both both ways. Two ways of thinking of how to trade something. And you can be no, more nimble with a, with a spread bet. It's easier to, you know, sometimes too nimble with a spread bet. So... Covering the widespread aspect of these small caps, I'll just go to WATR because, you know, this one made a huge growth run, stage one, stage two, stage three, and it kind of topped out, you could call it stage four, but for me it broke trend. So this on entry, you can see that this was a process, it dipped back in, this was an event, it just broke straight out. So... Yeah, just an event. So sometimes it's an event, sometimes it's a process. Uh, this one was an event as well. So there you go, three to two on a small cap. Grow stock, breakouts being an event on this stock. So basically this had a huge spread. Cheap stock, huge spread. But it had the characteristics, what I like to trade towards, to be a huge winner in percent, you know, a 200% move out of that base. So, you know, take the log scale off and you can see the move this made on this, and, and you can see the curve, the acceleration in the trend. So, you know, thinking about illiquid or liquid, another thing I'll just note about stocks like this is, is basically um, they can start off very illiquid and if they have a good run, the other end of the trade, they can they can grow into a liquid share, a bit like Boo did and a bit like Fever Tree did. You know, now they're efficient, larger cap liquid shares with high floats rather than small, inefficient, um, aggressive growth stocks. So that's you know basically I'm just talking about a trade I've taken this morning. Do not follow stock trip tips. Just use it as a process. Put it on a demo account if you want to follow along. I'll probably do, follow up, do a follow up video in the future with how this performed. We've got, um, you know, a market what's in a bit of a grumpy mood at the moment still. Um, so, you know, we're not out of the woods yet with the market, but this is something I, I've taken today. Do your own research. And if you want to. Obviously, you know, the reason I've done this video is to say if you want to learn more about how stocks trade, 
come to trainingbasis.co.uk and uh, there's a heap of free material what talks about position sizing and um, you know trends and everything like that in the free tutorials uh, menu.